All right then, gang, so we've seen already that when we use material UI components, they have these kind of base styles. They have a font family, which is Roboto, and they also have theme colors, things like secondary or primary, if you want. And by the way, I've removed all of the different classes we created in Make Styles in the last video, but I've kept this hook right here just in case we use them in the future. But anyway, we've got all of these base theme colors if you like and we can see one of those right here this is the secondary one and if we change this to primary then it's going to become blue because that is the primary theme color now the theme in material ui is a bit like a giant object with all of these different properties and values which specify things like what colors should be the primary and secondary colors how big an h1 variant of the typography component should be or what font family should be used for all different components now you can actually view this default theme on the material ui docs so let me just show you that i'm gonna come up here and type in default if i can spell this is default theme like this and I'm going to click on that and we can see this kind of object if you like that we can expand so we can see we've got some breakpoints built in and all of these different keys in here so these are the different breakpoints that we have extra small small medium large extra large and if we open up the values we can see the pixel values of those breakpoints we can also see down here we have the color palette and this is where we specify the primary colors and this is the main primary color right here and the secondary colors if we go down here we have some error stuff some error colors and if we go down we can see some stuff for typography such as the html font size the different things for the h1 variation etc so there's a load of default values in this default theme now if you don't like any of those default values you can create your own theme to override these values that doesn't mean you have to recreate this whole theme object like this and do every single value that would take ages but you can just pick and choose which properties you want to define yourself and then it will take precedence over the default values so let's give this a try so first of all i'm going to open up the app component which is the root component this is where we're going to create our theme and we're going to create it here so that it can wrap the rest of our application and that way our entire application can access this theme now the first thing we need to do is import a couple of things so i'm going to paste these in we have two things we have this function right here create mui theme and this is the function we use to create a custom theme object and then we also have a component called theme provider both coming from the core library and this theme provider right here this is the thing that's going to wrap our entire application and pass in the custom theme that we create with this function thereby giving our application access to that custom theme so let's start now by creating the theme we're going to store this in a constant and i'm going to call it theme and i'll set it equal to create mui theme so this function takes in an object as an argument and this object represents the theme that we want to create now like i said before we can just pick and choose which properties that we want to override so for example if i just want to override the primary main color i can do if we go back over here and come down to the palette you can see first of all there's a property called palette which we need to go into then into the primary property then the main property and if we give a different value for this it will override the default main value of the primary color which is what is this button right here at the minute so i'm going to come over here and say first of all into palette and then inside that we want to access the primary color and then inside that we need to specify the main color so i can pass in any hex code here that i want so I'm going to say fe 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 which is like a really really light gray almost white but not quite so if i save this now and preview this in a browser i'm going to refresh nothing happens and that's because i said at the minute this theme isn't doing anything and our application doesn't have access to it we need to provide our application with this theme and that's what we use the theme provider for so I'm going to wrap everything with the theme provider component and then let me just close this off and place this at the end like so and scoot this in then we pass a prop called theme to this 
and we set it equal to whatever theme that we want to provide to our application. Now, in our case, it's this thing right here, theme. So let me copy that and paste it all right here. So now if I save this, hopefully this will now work. And instead of that button being blue, which was the default primary color, it will now be this color. So let me see. Yep. And it's that kind of white, light gray color. So notice as well, it automatically detected it was a light background and it changed the text to black for us, which is pretty cool. Anyway, that's the primary color. What if we also want to change the secondary color? Well, what I'm going to do is say secondary like this, and I'm going to take a different approach this time. I'm not going to go into this object and declare main. Instead, what I'm going to do is use a color object from material UI, and this is going to be purple. So I'm going to click on this to auto import it. And notice we're getting the color purple from the colors parts of material UI. Now there's loads of different colors in material UI. And if you want to browse them all, go to the docs and search for palettes, click on this, and we can see all of the different colors. Oops, this isn't the one. Let me uh, instead go to color, click on this one. Hopefully this is the one. Yep, this is the one. So you can see down here all of the different colors we have. So I think I said purple. Yep. So it's from this part of the palette right here. Now, if we go back to the theme right here and open up the palette and go to secondary, for example, notice how we have all of these different values. We have the main, which is the main theme color, but also a light version, a dark version and the contrast text. Now, if we use a material UI color object like this, it applies all of the different values for us, light, main and dark automatically. So we don't have to worry about specifying each one because this is a purple object, not just a single color. So that's the secondary color. Now, if I save this and preview, I don't think we have anything secondary. So let me go back to the create component and let's change this to secondary instead and press save and now we can see it's kind of like this purpley color now i also want to use my own custom font instead of roboto in every component so what i'm going to do is use google fonts for this and i want to use this quicksand font right here so what i'll do is select all of these styles for the different font weights like this and then i will go over here to the import section and i'm going to grab this import right here so what this does is import the font into our project via css now we could do this instead using a link and add this to our html file much like we did the roboto font this time though i'm going to use this approach right here so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it inside index.css up here like so and let me just move this back over here so now we're importing the font however at the minute if I check this out, nothing is using that font. And that's because again, in the default theme, Roboto is the main font. Let me go back to the theme and come down to typography right here. And you can see we have a font family property, which is saying Roboto. And also we have all of these different font weights as well. So what I want to do is override some of these values, this to use quicksand, which we just imported, and also maybe some of the font weights as well. So let me go back to app.js and this time after palette down here, I'm going to add in another property and this property is typography. And the first property inside this I want to change is the font family. And all I need to do is reference this thing right here, quicksand, because that's what the font is called. We've loaded it in and now we can use it inside our theme. So let me paste it right here and now it's going to use quicksand by default. Okay, I also wanna just update the font weights just so it looks a little nicer. So I'm gonna say font weight, oops. And the first one is gonna be light. And I'm gonna set that equal to 400. And we imported all of these different font weights right here, by the way, 400, 500, 600, and 700. They're the ones we're gonna use. So this is 400. And in fact, I'm just gonna copy that a few times. Then I'm gonna change light right here to be regular and this is going to be 500 and then the next one right here is going to be medium and that's going to be 600 and then the last one is going to be bold and this is going to be 700. 
Now, if we save this, we should see the quicksand font now applied in our project. So let's go back over here and we can see this is now quicksand. Cool. So then this is how we can specify our own values using a custom theme. So doing this along with our ability to make extra styles using that make styles function makes material UI really flexible and customizable so that all of our websites don't look identical. So now that's out of the way, next up, I want to move on to forms and text fields.